President Joe Biden visited the scene of the Francis Scott Key Bridge collapse in Baltimore, Maryland on Friday. The bridge was stuck by a struck by a cargo ship on March 26. Biden promised on Friday that the government would cover up cover the cost of cleanup to rebuild the bridge and said the work would be done by union labor. He said, quote, we're going to move heaven and earth to rebuild this bridge as rapidly as humanly possible. We're going to do so with union labor and American steel. Here are some more of his remarks. I'm here to say your nation has your back and I mean it. And we're going to get this paid for, aren't we? Biden has promised since the fall of the bridge that the federal government would pay for its rebuilding. But his comments on Friday came after the House Freedom Caucus released a series of conditions for federal funding of the bridge. The conditions include waiving environmental and union wage regulations to avoid all unnecessarily, unnecessary delays and costs. So I think, <laughs> I think I'm not the only one to notice a little bit of <laughs> consistency there in saying we are going to rebuild this bridge as fast as humanly possible because it's really important to the area and important to the economy and important to everybody who lives and works there. And also we're going to use American labor and American steel. So we're just going to like raise the, that, I mean, that's going to raise the cost of doing it. And then we're going to get the American taxpayers are going to have to pay for it. I'm sorry, did American taxpayers crash a ship into a bridge? I don't think so. I think the ship did that and the company that owns it. So I'm a little suspicious of all I of think these that's qualifiers. And entirely right. You put, you really put your finger on an issue. Why is the government paying for it when it obviously should be the private enterprise that ran its ship into the bridge? Sure. There's a good reason for that, and it is lobbying by the oil industry. There was a law that's called the Titanic Law. Colloquially, the lever has done some really great coverage on this, as always. If you think, are thinking about a story and you're thinking this doesn't make sense, and a bunch of people are trying to exploit it for their own political projects, maybe saying it's DEI that made the bridge fall or something. I always recommend going to the lever because they do such a good deep dive on the kind of long-term legislative history around how we got into some of these places. Basically, it's a limited liability law um, that is called the Titanic Law because it was used to limit how much the Titanic owners had to pay out. Um, when that ship went down, they apparently paid a paltry few hundred uh, dollars per life lost, which was low even by um, the standards of the time. So another in another uh, instance, this law was used to try to limit how much um, the proprietors of the deep water horizon um, oil uh, drilling uh, uh, company were forced to pay uh, when that the largest maritime oil spill of all time happened. And when the deep water people tried to use it to shield their li liability, um, there was a congressional outcry and an effort to overturn the rule. But oil lobbyists in particular, um, a, a uh, baron named, oil baron named Lamar Smith, um, who is a representative and an oil baron at the same time, conflict of interest much. He also happens to be a climate change denier. Um, he's a big oil champion. Uh, during his time in Congress, he made a lot of money in oil at the same time as accepting $300,000 in campaign contributions and helped to fight to keep this liability um, uh, shield in check. So this ship, this company, this um, Scandinavian country that piloted the boat is trying to cap its damages at the total cost of the losses on the ship itself. And I think there's a really important question as to why Joe Biden, as a Democrat who says he cares about union labor, who's the first president to stand with striking folks on a picket line, all of these kinds of things, is kind of bending the knee to the idea that the company that caused the damage here shouldn't be yeah. responsible for paying, especially since one other part of this at the lever notes is that Baltimore Republicans have solicited larger ships to come into this harbor for profit based reasons, even though people cited safety concerns at the time. And it's not clear to me whether a ship of a smaller size would have caused less damage, et cetera. But it is worth noting that there are consequences to failing to regulate in some of these areas. Yeah, I actually don't disagree with what you're saying there, um, really. For a market to properly function, the, the like the, the costs have to be discernible, and also the and also the and uh, unavoidable, the profit, and also the cost. Yeah. If you artificially limit that, incentivizes risky behavior, and we shouldn't do that by by law. Um, and frank, frankly, this situation is even. I mean, at least. This is going to sound horrible, but at least the people on the Titanic signed up to be on the ship, right? They kind of you know at least what you're getting or you're consenting to it. This this uh, this ship drove into a bridge that uh, that people were still dri driving across that a construction crew was working on. Um, another uh, 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 
legal aspect of this I wanted to bring up um, that my uh, the magazine I also, also write for, Reason, covered the Foreign Dredge Act. Do you know about this? I don't. This is a hundred year ago law that makes it illegal for any foreign originated dredging ship. So these are ships that clear harbors that are going to do the work on uh, making the Port of Baltimore usable again. Um, it has to be done with an American dredging ship. But there aren't that many American dredging companies. They haven't had to face competition for 100 years, so they haven't innovated. They're actually still using ships that were built in like the 1930s to do this kind of work in harbors, so it's just going to be artificially more expensive and slower because of this. There's another law like the Jones Act where when, there's a, when there is a natural disaster in Puerto Rico or whatever, they actually they suspend the law even though, okay, if you admit that, that it's, uh, or, or whatever the disaster is, if you admit that this law like stops you from economically delivering or fixing things fast enough in emergency times. It, it, it does the same thing in the rest of times, too. Well, uh, but Buttigieg the, gave no uh, indication that they're going to waive it. And the question is whether there's a cost-benefit. There's an argument that if aliens were invading the world, then everyone should just work overtime to prevent that from happening. But that's not to say that people shouldn't be paid for overtime in a normal situation, right? So what is an emergency posture versus what the standard should be to make sure that people can have a living wage, that people can have OSHA protections, people don't get their hands chopped off in the bread machine or what have you? I think those are different considerations. Well, this, this is about whether people, this is just raising the cost of delivering goods to people in, I mean, it mainly affects the Jones Act, mainly affects Puerto Rico. Um, again, we're saying, Joe Biden is saying, we're, you're going to pay for this, and we want to do it as fast as possible. But th this is a little bit like with the, the, micro, the subsidy for the microchip plants to build microchip plants in the U.S., which I knew was never going to work. And now they're not going to build any of the plants because it's too... The, it's too onerous to do so. We have too much um, regulation getting in the way. So I understand and agree with and appreciate the Freedom Caucus's skepticism in this case. In another article, uh, also from The Lever, they pointed out that eight months before, this, this company, it's called Maersk, it's a Danish company, the, the shipping company, eight months before Maersk Line Limited chartered cargo ship crashed into the Baltimore Bridge, likely killing six people and injuring others, the Labor Department sanctioned the shipping conglomerate for retaliating against an employee who reported unsafe working conditions above a Maersk operated boat. In its order, the department found that Maersk had, quote, a policy that requires employees to first report their concerns to the company prior to reporting it to the Coast Guard or other authorities. So again, there are a lot of things implicated here. What are the labor um, priors that might have led to a delayed or poor reporting system? And why isn't that there is it that is it that there isn't more pressure, rather, to have this company absorb its own costs? No, this is a, a really they fundamental. They crashed a ship into a bridge. They should pay for it. Yeah, this is a really fundamental economic principle, which, as you alluded to, Robbie, you will not have an efficient system. Even if you're fully invested in capitalism, you think capitalism is the way to go, you will have inefficiencies in the system if you do not have people forced to absorb the costs of the externalities that they create in the yes. world, of the harms that they create in the world. If they're able to externalize it to the public, there's no reason for them to stop doing the dangerous agreement. behavior. And this is part of the reason why some folks argue for stricter liability standards when people are engaged in inherently dangerous activities. Let's say drilling an oil rig uh, thousands of miles down in the ocean or whatever. Hundreds, I don't know how deep the ocean is. Um, or or do we, having large shipping containers, or yeah. <laughs> or uh, shipping very toxic materials and things like that. You Because you don't want a company in a situation where they say, well, it wasn't my fault that a deer crossed the train track and therefore I've made half of Ohio toxic. Well, if you are going to profit enormously from shipping very toxic materials, you have to assume the risk that all of these these things might happen that cause some kind of an accident. So what would incentivize you to avoid an accident if you internalize costs? Well, maybe you will drive a lot slower, have a lot of safety, uh, your own safety protocols put into uh, effect on uh, the tracks, have better trained engineers that are better, to, are better able to see farther down the tracks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But if companies don't have that incentive, they, the people who are in the best position to prevent the harm from happening in the first place, will have no incentive to do so. So Totally agree. Totally agree. We'll, we'll keep you updated on this. Would love to have some folks from the Lever Camp come to explain in more detail. Stick around. We're rising coming up next.